Hey YouTube, today I'm going to talk to you about an app for your Mac that if you work anywhere with audio or you listen to audio or you want to record audio or you want to send audio from one place to another on your Mac, you need to check out Audio Hijack. It's free to download from rogueamoeba.com slash audio hijack. It only costs $59 US when you decide to buy it. So this isn't going to be a full walkthrough tutorial, every little widget and whiz bang of audio hijack for something like that. If you want that kind of tutorial or walkthrough, please check out my podcasting 101 course at courses.chrisands.com. You can sign up to be notified about it and check that out. I'll, in that course, I'll have a lot more details on how to use audio hijack specifically to podcasting. All right, let's check out audio hijack. Okay. So when you open up audio hijack, you're greeted with this screen basically and uh, I've got a couple of templates that I already have in use uh, for other applications but I'm going to go down to new session and you get the template chooser and right here you can see uh, right off the bat the many uses for audio hijack whether you want to record an application on your Mac say Safari or um, a game maybe or something some other app that's generating any sort of audio whether it's music spoken word sound effects, anything like that, and you want to record that. You can also record audio from a DVD or a CD, I guess, going old school, and play that back later. You can just use it to increase the volume of uh, apps on your Mac, let's say. Maybe your your older Mac has got really crappy speakers and you want to boost the volume. You can use it to record from a hardware device, like a, um, a USB mixer of some sort, like the microphone I'm using could be run through Audio Hijack. They've got a podcasting template for recording just right inside just for you recording a podcast, record analog devices that you've got plugged in like a record player, improve audio, possibly maybe you just want to route audio from one application and send it somewhere else, either recording it or maybe you're using it like I do and send it to a, a, a Skype call or a podcast production that you're live streaming to Facebook or, or, or Twitch or wherever you happen to be going. You can also just use it to record everything your Mac does. Any sound that comes out of your Mac, it would record for you. Templates for Skype, uh, voice over IP applications like Skype, Discord, pretty much anything, again, that your Mac can run, it could record from. Or if you want to record audio from a web browser, maybe there's a talk radio segment you want to record for use later. Obviously, making sure you're doing it all legally and it's not being resold and repurposed for your own monetary gains. Check with a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. So while we can start with one of the templates, a good place to start with Audio Hijack is just to use a blank session so you can understand how to build uh, the various components that make up a recording session in Audio Hijack. So we'll start with a blank session. So I'm just going to double click new blank session. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just show how to record yourself. So whether you're talking to a fancy microphone or maybe just into your computer, you can set up a template so you could record, say, a podcast and then send that out. Over on the right hand side, you want to capture your audio first. And so you're going to choose your input device. So in my case, I'm going to drag input device over. It automatically detects my Scarlett USB device, uh, but it could be maybe your just your built-in microphone that you start with, and that could work just fine. Um, but if you do have a fancier microphone or audio interface of some sort, you'll want to select that. Uh, one item of note here is if it's a multi-channel device, you need to make sure you choose the right input that uh, your microphone is plugged into. It'll probably try and record all of them by default, I think, but uh, you want to make sure you grab the right one. Next, we might want to do a bit of just testing of the audio, make sure it's coming in at the right levels, that kind of thing. So under built-in effects, we're going to choose a 10-band EQ, and we're going to choose a volume. And in order to tell what's happening with our audio, we're going to grab a meter from down here. So we, there's a few different ways you can view this, but uh, we'll just choose a peak meter. So that should give us an idea of what's happening with our audio. Finally, what we need is a recorder, a place to send that audio to. So we'll grab the recorder block. And within there, you can choose what uh, format you'd like the audio to be recorded in. So the default is high quality MP3. You can choose, which is actually pretty high quality for uh, if it was a podcast, you wouldn't need that. Regular quality MP3 would be more than enough. Um, but you can also use uncompressed AIFF or compressed Apple lossless, regular and high quality AAC audio. So if it's just, that's something you would use if it was recording for your own personal use to listen to later, maybe stuff off the internet, things like that. Um, but if you're going to distribute it for a podcast, you want it in MP3 in the end, you can name it uh, using file name here and choose 
You can use uh, just a regular name, so sample recording, or you can actually add in um, templates. So it'll throw in automatically throw in the date. Maybe put a dash, uh, put in the month, dash, and then maybe you want to put um, my mic. Let's say just for so you can remember where it's going to go. You can save it to. Audio Hijacks folder, you can choose somewhere else on your Mac that you maybe want to save it to. I'm just going to record it to the desktop. So over in the, starting with the 10 band EQ, you can adjust, uh, you know, the various levels of your audio. Um, there's some presets that you can use just to give you an idea of where to start. I have a fairly bassy voice and, and a microphone that adds a lot of bass, so maybe I might want to draw, drop down the bass on the left-hand side and maybe bring up the treble a little bit. Um, again, this is something that won't be covered in detail here, but you can adjust that. You can sort of quickly tell how things sound by turning a block on and off uh, like that. In the volume levels, this is where you can adjust what volume is actually getting sent uh, from your mic into the recorder. And once we hit record, we'll be able to see uh, how our levels are doing. So it's the one thing with Audio Hijack is uh, that's maybe confusing at first is right now I'm talking. It's set up to record on my left channel, the right channel of my, my uh, audio input device, but no audio is coming through. Nothing seems to be happening. All the magic starts happening once you hit the record button. So if I hit record now, now you can see that there is audio coming through. I can see when it's peaking or sorry where it's peaking and how high it is you don't want the audio to be peaking past what's on this meter and if I drop down the volume for example here you can see that the volume drops dramatically in the peak RMS meter you can also see that the recorder is going so it's telling you how long it's been recording and I'll just bring this volume back up so I can use the audio how long it's been recording and the size of the file that it's recording at one thing to note, you wouldn't actually, um, if you if I had headphones on and was listening to what my computer was recording, I might hear it through my mixer, but I wouldn't necessarily hear the audio that's actually being played because right now what's happening, if you follow along, it's going from my microphone through a 10-band EQ, through a volume adjustment meter, through the peak RMS block, and then into a recorder. It's not being sent out anywhere to be where I could hear it. So if I wanted to add on... Um, a output device so I can hear it maybe somewhere. I could tag that on at the end here, probably before the recorder ideally because you want to know what it's going to sound like. And so right now that's getting sent back into the Scarlett into my USB device, but I could choose again something else, maybe my uh, built-in speakers. In which case now, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but it's coming out my computer speakers giving me a bit of an echo. Not what I really want in this case, in this scenario, but in other I'm going to turn it off. In other scenarios, you might want to be able to hear that. Maybe you're recording someone else talking and you want to be able to hear the audio as well as it getting recorded. That's how you do that. Once you've finished your podcast, assuming again, it's just a spoken word thing that you're doing, you can hit stop and you're done. And then down in the bottom right corner, you can check on, click the recordings button. And now it'll show you all the different recordings you have with the various templates. So or sessions that you have. And so ours, for this purposes, is this sample recording right here. Again, like I said, you could fill in details if you wanted on how to, what the name and date and all that kind of stuff were. If I just hit play, now you can see that there is audio coming through. I can see when it's peaking, or sorry, where it's peaking and how high it is. You don't want the audio to be peaking past what's on this meter. And if I drop so there's my podcast if I wanted to use that. And down here in the bottom, I can choose to open it in an editor. If I had a podcast editor, audio editing app of choice, I could show it, throw it right into iTunes. I could share it somewhere right out to maybe text it to somebody or uh, upload it to an FTP site or just reveal it in the finder. There's my podcast. Again, I can hit space bar and play. Now you can see that there it's going. So it's there you telling can you tell where the audio recording. dropped down. So there's my finished MP3. If that was my podcast, I'm off to the races and I'm done. So that's how quickly you can just record your voice, uh, say for a podcast or maybe voiceover work, things like that. If you were going to send that file to somebody else, you probably wouldn't, like for editing purposes, maybe for a video or a documentary or to be included somewhere else, you'd probably want to uh, erase the quality to uncompressed AIFF or at least compress lossless, just so that the file is a really good quality file, audio file, that uh, then if they start editing and chopping up and stuff, they can work with higher quality stuff. All right, let's go to the next feature.
So we're back at the template chooser screen. And just to show you here, you can click and rename this to uh, podcast demo, let's say. That's my that session. Next up, I'm going to show how to record audio from a web page that maybe you're watching or viewing or listening to. So we'll click new session. We'll do a blank session again. Again, there's a template you could do this with, but just so you can understand how the blocks are built. We'll go new session. So previously we, record, we grabbed an input device. This time we're going to grab application as a source. And from here, we're going to choose an app. So what I've got open is a Safari window with a YouTube page. Uh, it happens to be a podcast I recorded the other day. Uh, I've asked the There's a lot of uh, YouTube fans pre-sale buying tickets for a concert tour well, and they need to know, have questions YouTube and stuff about it. So we were going to do a podcast on that. So what I'm going to choose for my application is, you might guess, uh, Safari. And you have it set to open up a... Uh, particular URL when you hit record in Audio Hijack so that maybe it's an internet radio broadcast that starts at a certain time. You can actually do scheduling and stuff in Audio Hijack, which I won't cover right now, but you can have it automatically open that, hit record, and start recording something so you don't even have to be there when it happens. But for this purposes, I'm just going to choose the, the uh, application I want. And I could have it in the advanced tab here. I can choose to have it include any audio input as well, like say from my microphone uh, on my computer, let's say if I wanted to maybe do voiceover over whatever I was recording. Um, and also one important thing that you do want to check, so that one's probably not as useful, the audio input, but filling playback gaps with silence is a good one to check if you're doing any sort of time matching uh, thing. So it, where if there's no audio being sent from the application, but maybe you're also recording at the same time some other audio, a voiceover or whatever, you want that to be recorded as well. You need to make sure that the both audio files are kept in sync. And that's how you would do that, by filling the, any gaps in silence with audio or with um with stuff, with uh, filling any audio ba gaps with silence so that there's the file keeps they're both kept on the same track I, I can't explain that very well from there maybe we want again the same things like we did with our voice we maybe want a meter to uh, make sure it's not getting recording too loud and maybe we want a uh, volume control so we can adjust it that should actually be before the the meter so we can adjust it and see what the effects are and then we want to make sure we record it as well here again let's say we'll just leave it as the standard mp3 we're going to change the name to YouTube recording, and then maybe put the uh, date, let's say, just for fun. We'll leave it as high quality MP3. Instead of the 10 band EQ, we'll just do a simple uh, adjustment here as well of just bass and treble that can allow us just to do very simple, easy uh, adjustments. So now if I hit record here, you can see I'm talking, nothing's happening, it's recording. But what I'm going to do is switch over to YouTube, the, to Safari, I guess, but to YouTube. Hit play. So you'll notice uh, I can't hear the audio that's coming out because, once again, I didn't set up uh, an output device. But I can see that it's being recorded. So whatever's happening on the video is being recorded. If I wanted to actually hear that, I could say add an output device. Uh, we also have hints of added international dates. We sort of covered this, but just so and we, then we sure we dot all the eyes. could choose how soon my audio device, which my headphones, I can hear it coming through, or I could just use my built-in output. At the end of this, however long you wanted to record for, you'd have the audio from that uh, recording in a file. And so I'll hit stop for now. I'm just going to pause the YouTube video and go to my recordings. And after a new blank, under new blank section, session, uh, I'm going to reveal that in the finder. There it is. YouTube recording, MP3, play it back. John the zero for UK, for instance. So the added international dates. We sort of cover this, but just so we make sure we dot mm -hmm. all the I's and T's. So there you go. That's how you could record from anything in Safari. So YouTube is the example I gave, but it could be a web radio station. It could be a podcast. Maybe you just want to record 10 seconds of somebody else's audio to reuse in your own podcast just to you know, give an example. It could be um, some trailer audio from a uh, music trailer or whatever. Um, obviously being re very aware of any sort of digital rights management and uh, copyright and all that kind of stuff. You could use this for nefarious purposes, but the, the idea being record anything from any website, any sort of audio that a website is putting out can be recorded in this manner.
So one thing I reference is doing sort of voiceover work maybe, and I don't have an exact demo here to that makes a lot of sense in terms of why you'd want to do this for this purposes, but just to show the example, we'll build off of the, the Safari recording example here. I'm going to turn the internal speaker output device over to my USB device and so that I can hear it. And then I'm going to add, kind of like combining our previous session, I'm going to add an input device down here. If it go low enough, you can see it would automatically try and um, grab onto the existing chain. And you could do that if you wanted all the audio to end up being on the same file. If it was just a quick uh, file you need to record, no problem, send it off uh, that way. But in this case, I'm going to choose the, uh, set it up as a separate chain. Input device one, input device one. And uh, we'll just do the quick bass treble adjustment again, and maybe a volume. So I could adjust my volume if I wanted to get the peak RMS. And then I'm also going to add a recording device. And I don't need to set up an audio output for this chain because I already have monitoring in my headphones. I'm going to put my headphones on actually for this part. And so I can hear myself already in the headphones, even if this is running, it should be. And so what I could do, use this for, I'm just going to switch back to Safari here and uh, hit play. So that's not going to rule you out. Start hit record. So the audio is being recorded by Safari. The volume is down right now, so I'm going to turn it up. Set up, made it complete. And then they decide they don't want to use the pre-seal code yet. They want to keep it for the next bit. So maybe I want to record now some of my own spoken word over top of whatever because they happen to be saying because I, it's just background audio maybe. And so I can turn the volume down on on that recording while my recording is still going at full volume. And uh, this will get really confusing when I'm talking and I'm talking. <laughs> so, uh, But effectively what this does for you is now you have a, a finished file. I'll hit pause or stop here. Uh, yeah, if it's an unused and turn off the web browser again. In my recordings, I now have uh, two files. One is the application from YouTube and one is my recording. So I can hit play. So the audio is being recorded by, Saf so that's my recording. And then here is YouTube, I think. And I then they decide they don't want to use the, the YouTube recording. And so then I could re repurpose that, maybe take it into an audio editor, so like Logic or GarageBand. Uh, Vision, any, uh, any audio editing application, and chop that together as maybe a voiceover for a movie trailer or something that I wanted to do, or commentary track for something else that I had produced, um, and it gives you the ability to record multiple things as separate tracks. So here again, you could, this could be your input device, could be your microphone, it could be maybe a Skype call that you had with somebody, it could be um, just Again, any audio that your Mac can produce, Audio Hijack can basically grab a hold of and record, and then you can manipulate that audio, edit that audio, produce something with that audio later. All right, so that's a very quick overview of some of the neat things you can do with Audio Hijack. Obviously, there's a lot more details and way more information that you could go into in, in an app like this. There's it's plenty to dive deep on, um, and that's the kind of stuff that I'll be covering in my Podcasting 101 course, which you can check out at courses.chrisenz.com. The link should be somewhere in on the screen here, too, to write down or, or copy into your browser. And I'd love for you to check that out and join me in there. We're hoping to create a community of podcasters, newbies, and, and experienced podcasters, all learning together and challenging and pushing each other in this fun medium of podcasting. If you did like the video, please subscribe and check out some of the other videos and do the little thumb up thing if you're so inclined. Thanks for watching. Bye.